Today on CityCast Denver, zoning. It's a function of our government that literally shapes our city. And there are two big zoning proposals on your ballot right now. But let's be honest, zoning can be complicated and arcane. So today I'm speaking with one of the councilwomen who is pushing for these changes. District 1 Representative Amanda Sandoval is here to explain where these ballot measures came from and why they matter. Today is Thursday, March 23rd. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Councilwoman Amanda Sandoval, welcome back to CityCast Denver. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to talk to you because you're behind two of these questions on our ballot right now, and I know they both pertain to this issue that you're really passionate about, which is zoning. And before we get into the details of these two initiatives, I want to think about the bigger picture because sometimes I think it's hard to understand what zoning has to do with us as voters or why we should care. So um, Councilwoman Sandoval, why should we care about zoning? So I have been told that sometimes zoning is not the sexiest topic. (laughs) And I beg to differ. I think it actually is a really important topic. As somebody who is a Latina and grew up in Northwest Denver in the North Side, where a majority of people were people of color, the biggest investment you would make usually is as a property owner is your home. That's usually people's biggest investment. And it's interesting because you have tons of experts who will advise you on how to handle your money in your retirement account, how to handle um, money if you have children who want to go to college. But who advises you when it comes to your biggest investment in your home? Real estate agents don't always know zoning and zoning districts and what you can and cannot do. We have a lot of developers who are well-versed. They study it. They are paid to do it. They hire lawyers who teach them. So who's representing the constituents? Who's representing the other side of the coin? Um, And I feel like that's been my calling to do that for the residents of Denver. So you're you're talking about zoning and this idea of, um, like you said, for many folks, our homes are our, our main investment. We're not investment bankers. We don't have, you know, okay. if we if we're lucky enough also to be able to purchase a home, zoning can impact what we can do to our homes and on that land, right? Correct. So let's get into these initiatives then. Um, I'd love to start with two uh, M, which is on our ballots. Can you explain to listeners what? what they are voting on with 2M. So for 2M, it is the Board of Adjustment. So the Board of Adjustment was created in 1923. Wow. Think about that a hundred years ago. And oftentimes people exaggerate when it comes to years. And when I say this, zoning has been in effect for a hundred years. There's no exaggeration. It was created in 1923. And what it does is if you want to pop your top or you want to save a tree on your property. Or if you kind of want to do anything like add an extra room to your house or build a garage. Correct. You have to vary away from your current zoning. And the only way to do that is to go before the Board of Adjustment. And since it hasn't been updated in 100 years, Councilwoman Robin Kanich and I took this huge endeavor on. And what we're doing is we want to update that criteria that has been codified in the charter for 100 years. For example, if you had a 60-year-old oak tree and you wanted to save the tree, there's no variance process, meaning varying away from the zoning code, that would allow you to save that tree. So a couple of things I feel like you're addressing here with this change is the Board of Adjustments typically was, it's a group of people in the city and they're, and they're, they're essentially making really big decisions. So for instance, my house is at the back of my lot. If I want to build an ADU, which is another, you know, a mother-in-law apartment on my property, I can't right now because I'd have to put it on the front of my lot and I'm not zoned for that. So I'd have to go in front of the board of adjustments and they could make that decision if I could or could not build this thing I want to change the zoning for, right? Correct. And they are making really important judgments that impact people such as yourself, um, everyday residents in Denver, 80% of um, the projects that go before the Board of Adjustment 
are usually single family homes, such as myself. I'm an owner of a single family home and yourself, Brie. So yes, it impacts just everyday users. So what would be the issue with like the way the board was set up, say two years ago, what were the issues you were coming across uh, that or that you and Councilwoman Kenich were seeing with this board that was making it maybe harder for folks to build more housing? Questions that were coming before the board for specifically for an accessory dwelling unit in Council District 1, a couple were building an accessory dwelling unit for his mother who was disabled and they were asking them certain questions to- about the mother. She's a protected class. It does not matter what kind of disability you have. She's a protected class. And um, so you cannot ask questions. What kind of disabilities do you have? That's not, that's not, she's a protected class federal by the federal government. And so we were seeing discrepancies in some of the determinations when they come, when the, if it's approved or not, it's called a determination. And I just want to uh, say for li- longtime listeners will have heard our show where we talked with uh, Sean and Ben Johnson, the family you're talking about, who were trying to build an ADU in your neighborhood for their disabled mother. And they felt like they experienced a lot of bias against them from this board. We'll share a link to that in the show notes. Um, but we're also a- you're asking us to change the charter, which is like the defining document of the city. And that feels like a big deal. Why do we need to change the charter? We have to pull it out of the charter to update any of the language. And what is important to me is oftentimes we talk about systems that were based in racism. Yeah. In 1923, redlining was occurring. In 1930s, 40s, 50s, redlining was occurring. And so if we have a system that was based in criteria in 1923, How do we not know that it was not based in racism? Mm. How do we not know that only the wealthiest people were able to navigate these systems? And I continue to see that as a councilwoman and experience that firsthand from my constituents. And it's time to update that. It's 2023. There's lots of federal regulations. There's lots of protections, ADA accessibility, that were not in place in 1923. And our values have changed since 1923. And I want our zoning to reflect those values. This episode is brought to you by Acapelooza. Because some of the best acapella groups in Colorado are going head-to-head this weekend. It's an annual one-night-only spectacle with cash prizes and celebrity judges like Neela Pekarik, the Grammy-nominated cellist we had on our show last year to talk about her amazing new musical, Rattlesnake Kate. This year's Acapalooza is going down this Saturday, March 25th at 7.30 p.m. at the Gates Auditorium at DU. Seriously, you don't want to miss this. They've got incredibly talented acapella groups coming in from all over the front range, and you know they're going to be bringing their best. Because, come on, this is the one and only Acapalooza. Buy tickets and learn more at singdenver.com. Okay, let's talk about the other measure, 2N. This one seems to be about like who has a say in rezoning petitions. Like if I wanted to build a big housing complex on my property, which of my neighbors would be allowed to weigh in? But like, why does that matter? Or or why should this matter to Denver voters? So there was a rezoning in my council district on the corner of 17th and Sheridan. And the people who were most impacted by this rezoning didn't agree with the rezoning. So they went to community planning and development and got this petition process. And people across the street in Lakewood were allowed to sign the petition. Because in Denver, when we rezone properties, if you are within 200 feet of the parcel that would be rezoned, you or your neighbors could get together to trigger what's called a supermajority vote of city council, which means you would have to have 10 people on city council approve the rezoning. Normally it's seven. And what Councilwoman Kanich and I feel is that property owners, you don't have to live in Denver, but own a property in Denver should be allowed to sign the petition. You should not be able to go across jurisdictions. And so we just felt like it was given some areas, especially in Council District 5, where you have Glendale right in the middle of Denver. Right in smack in the middle. Yeah. Smack in the middle <laughs> that this was a, a cleanup, a moder- another modernization when it comes to rezonings. 
okay, I love this example because I know this exact corner and it's like kind of weird that Lakewood residents could weigh in on our rezoning, but we as Denver residents can't weigh in on theirs. Correct. And just like you and I can only vote in Denver. We are not able to vote in Lakewood. We don't vote for Lakewood mayors. We don't vote for Lakewood ballot initiatives. Therefore, we are not invited into their processes because we are not property owners in Lakewood. So if you are a property owner in the city and county of Denver, we believe that your voice should matter more over somebody who lives across the street. And so we've heard that consistently throughout the years. And so it was another modernization, something that I feel is really important as a city councilwoman who's looking at these old ordinances to make sure that they are actually weighing in favor of property owners and voters in Denver. And that's something that I take very serious. And um, that's why I'm working on these two things. And I think that's why they haven't been touched is they don't get very much traction and they're kind of confusing, to be honest. I really appreciate you asking me on here. I've gotten several questions and people are very, especially 2M, people are confused about. And and I said, well, it hasn't been updated in over a year. This other one hasn't ever been updated why? I think it's because it's complicated and people sometimes stay away from things that are complicated. (laughs) And so that's what I'm doing is I'm creating mechanisms to make sure that we are protecting the average person where you don't have to have a land use attorney to be able to represent you to a board. And I want as much predictability as we want for the development community. I want just or more predictability for the residents of Denver who've lived here for a long time, who've seen our whole entire built environment change before our eyes in our generation. I'm just, I'm cracking up a little bit because I'm thinking about this ballot we're on. We've got the mayor, we've got some big council races. (laughs) We've of course got the Park Hill Golf Course, which is at its, at its root, a zoning issue. And, and then we have these two initiatives that are kind of just floating by, but they're huge that you've put together in terms of how we actually can sh- help shape what our city looks like. So it's just Correct. as important to vote on 2M and 2N as it is for everything else on the rest of this ballot. It's so important to cast your vote. I was talking to my 19-year-old son the other day and talking about the ballot. And he was like, Mom, what does this have to do with me? And mm-hmm. I said, well, if you were to buy a rental property and you had an older garage in an older neighborhood like Sunnyside or... um Berkeley, would you want to be able to pop your top or be able to build something on top of your garage? And he said, yeah. And I said, so son, I'm really doing this for your generation. I love it. I love this. This is, (laughs) you made me excited (laughs) to fill out the rest of my ballot, which I am staring at right now. Um, Well, good. (laughs) Well, Councilwoman Amanda Sandoval, thank you so much for joining and explaining all this. Yeah. Thank you for having, and thank you for always taking the opportunity to ask me these zoning questions because they do. They're, they're really impactful and they're not the ones that make headlines, but they're the ones that actually make a huge difference for people like you and me. And here's what else Denverites are talking about. The American Indian Academy of Denver. We've been talking about this charter school since it opened in a strip mall in Athmar Park in the fall of 2020. The founder's hope was that teaching through an indigenous lens would help improve on-time graduation rates for Native American students. But the school consistently struggled to make things work around the pandemic. Enrollment was lower than expected, funding was lower than expected, and costs were higher than they could afford. Chalkbeat reports that the school's board voted earlier this month to close the academy down for good. And speaking of how hard it is to be a kid right now, there was a temporary lockdown at East High School yesterday after another shooting. As of this recording Wednesday afternoon, two faculty members were shot and being treated at an area hospital. The alleged student shooter fled the school and classes have been canceled for the rest of the week. This comes just weeks after East High School student Luis Garcia died from gunshot wounds he sustained while sitting in his car just outside the school, prompting a student-led walkout and calls for gun legislation at the Capitol. Thanks to the Denver Post, Nine News, and Westward for ongoing reporting of the situation. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell your friend who has been considering not voting to just vote already. Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, by texting Denver to 66866. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See ya. It's 
like real, the most extreme first world problems I've ever just described to you. <laughs> my my mic stand's actually a kickstand. 